You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, so our panel right here, uh, this breaking news just in. Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia announces that bars, clubs, and concert venues will be allowed to open on May 31st. That's just in a couple of weeks. Uh, what's interesting about this, Amisha, is that in South Korea, they shut their bars down again because one person visited multiple uh, bars. They already have 100 confirmed coronavirus cases that trace back to that individual. And they are, according to this item here, they're trying to trace some 10,000 others. That is a perfect example. And we had the Meharry folks on here, well, that how they said, look, how this thing works, how one person could potentially infect up to a million. They op reopened those bars in South Korea. Now all of a sudden they shut them back down because one person led to 100 new cases. Good idea, bad idea for Georgia to reopen concert venues, bars, and restaurants. It's a horrible idea, and it's a horrible idea on so many fronts. I mean, Georgia already is a mess when it comes to their health care systems and the lack of adequate access to health care they already have. But in addition to that, the state of Georgia has not implemented a single method of contact tracing. So when you, when you can't do that and you can't get down to that patient zero, you will not really know which one person it took to infect hundreds or thousands of people. Um, it, it, it's problematic, and I think that Governor Kemp He's trying his darndest to make sure that Georgia continues to make money and he doesn't want to he doesn't want his state to feel the bleed. But with that same on that same token, he has to understand that this is bigger than him and his state's economy. Um, th there are some major things that have to be in place before you could ever consider reopening those types of those, those types of venues or those types of events. One of which is making sure that social distancing measures are there. The other is acknowledging that you cannot have more than a certain number of people in those places at one time, which to be honest, if you're talking about concert venues, that kills the point of a concert. If you can only have 10 or 15 people there, then who's going to actually open and play? So I think that at the end of the day, he just has to understand that the new normal means that we can't go back to the old normal. And the people of Georgia, God bless them, because they have leadership that is not only ignorant, but refuses to acknowledge any of the information that we've seen from doctors, scientists, or any of the other nations in terms of how they are deciding to and moving forward with reopening. Not a single one is deciding to go full on reopen for concerts, other event venues, and things like that, because it's simply just irresponsible. Is it a good idea, uh, Melek, to reopen bars, clubs, and concert venues? I wouldn't definitely. I wouldn't say um, concert venues. It's such a. It's such a. I mean, it's such a large venue. I definitely wouldn't say concert venue. I know I'm not so sure about bars. I think that there are measures, and and I say this because I consider what's actually on the table here in D.C. as far as when bars open, the steps that they would have to take. Essentially, you know, six t tables, six feet apart, only a certain number of people of time, you know, from, at a time. So I think that those are real considerations. I think that the gov I think that these state, not just the governors, but the mayors of all of these cities, they do have to balance the c concern for the economy versus of what is what is really a public health crisis. So I'm, I sympathize with them in that. But in the case with Brian Kemp, I think, in fact, it was even Donald Trump, the president himself, came out and said that he disagreed with it. And I do, I don't think that Georgia has met the um, the standard for that initial opening phase, a phase one. I'm not sure if Georgia has actually met phase one yet. I, I don't, I don't think that they have. And if they did, I apologize. But I don't think that they've met that. But for for Brian Kemp to, like I say, I, I I'm okay with. Bars, but when you get to something those larger venues, I, I'm really concerned about that. But fortunately, what I hope, and at least what I'm seeing, I think on, the people will self quarantine themselves. So people will self isolate. People won't just go out. And I do think that the demand is there. If we look around the country, sure, there are people who want to get out. They want to get out in the sun. They want to go out to these places and do things. But what I'm hoping is, is that a lot of these people, even for me, it doesn't matter. When they open in D.C., you won't see me in a restaurant in, a, in D.C. for a very long time, let alone a plane. 
Kelly? Not only is it a terrible idea, it's just, it, it's dumb. It is really, really dumb. Like, not, they haven't met any of the quotas from any professional entity, rec- like the recommendations that have been coming out as to when to reopen. They haven't followed any of those. They don't even have um, enough tests uh, available to test enough of the population to get an accurate check as to exactly how many people have COVID. Georgia's a very large state, and a majority of the state is rural. So I can only imagine just how many people haven't even been reached to to verify that they had COVID, as in they, uh, were, they contracted it and now they're over it, let alone people who have died from it or anything like that. To have a bar open at this juncture is just, it, it's dumb. Like, we have issues of people social distancing in the places that are already open, such as supermarkets and uh, carryouts and the like. We, we can't even do social distancing in a Walmart and you want us to do social distancing in a smaller entity like a bar or a restaurant? I, I, look, DC isn't anywhere near close to reopening yet, but neither is Georgia. And the fact that Georgia even wants to do anything along those lines right now, it it's it's definitely a profit over people mentality. And it's unfortunate because the governor was elected for the people, not for money, not for profit, for the people. And he has profit in mind over people. So it, it, it's just incredibly frustrating to me. Absolutely. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honore. Uh, thanks for his first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryan, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congresswoman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Interbridge Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota City. And Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Brave Boy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, Merida Bennett College. Coroner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugal, president elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope 
or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.